It's nice to spawn here, and this time I'm going to be reviewing WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 on the PlayStation 2. Now I'll start this review off. Um, you know, I'm a big time fan of SmackDown, SmackDown vs. Raw series. You know, the last few games haven't been as good. I think since 07, the series has kind of went downhill, and there were a few games here and there in the middle that were average at best, but I've been a fan of the games for a while and a lot of other wrestling games basically because I'm a wrestling fan and all that. But um this game actually is pretty good. It is an improvement over 07, 08, and 09. And even on the PS2 it actually still is a you know pretty good game actually. You know the gameplay is not changed up much from the last game. Basically they improved the Royal Rumble, they add stuff like the, you can create diving finishers now, you can there's but pretty much it's mostly the same exact stuff. I really don't know it's um but um it's basically the exact same gameplay, you know, same matches and mostly like, the same kind of mechanics. You know, there's a few improvements like I like and there's like improvements to the Royal Rumble, maybe the announcers, but that's not really in the sound there. That's not really part of the gameplay or anything, but the game is improved but the most of it actually is oh nine and stuff like that. You know, eight and everything. The presentation, the graphics of the game, you know, for a PS2 game, they're still pretty good. The wrestlers, most of them look like themselves, actually. There's the occasional wrestler or two, a few here and there, the divas and the male wrestlers and all that stuff. You know, that, that you know, don't look as close as other wrestlers or anything, but, you know, most of them, most of them are close enough to be, um, to be, um, what's the word? Um, to be um, you know, close enough to what they should be looking like, you know, so you can actually know, tell who is who and everything. The sound, I think the sound in this game is really good. You know, the voice acting in the story modes, you know, are pretty good. The occasional voice actor here and there is kind of bad. Like, you know, I think Maria's voice acting in Edge of Storyline actually is, you know, average at best and everything, but, you know, most of them sound pretty good actually, or average. The song list. A lot of, all the, most of the wrestlers have their actual themes. Some of them are probably a little bit outdated, but or they have a different version. Like I think Michelle McCool has like a remix of her theme over here. You basically heard the song in it, a remix of it, and it's pretty good. It's ever, they, the, the songs like the wrestlers are pretty good. And the soundtrack, a lot of stuff from Skillet. There's like two songs from Skillet, and there's like Luna Skinner and all these other people. And, um, you know, the soundtrack actually is really good. I think it's it's better than last year's in 08. You know, basically better than, I think, besides the original SmackDown vs. Raw, I think 09, oh, basically 2010 actually has, I think, the second best um, SmackDown vs. Raw soundtrack. You know, 06, 07, 08, 09 were all okay and all that, but the original and um, 2010 were the best ones. Um... The story. I haven't played all the stories. I rented this game before on the Wii, ver the Wii version before I rented the PS2 version, and um, most of the stories I played were okay. The Creed Wrestler story that was, you know, okay. At first when I played, I thought it was I think better, but after I thought about it, it's not as good as I thought it was. Um, Edge of Storyline was okay. Randy Storyline, who I played it, was okay. Have you had to play Shawn Michaels or the 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 John Cena Triple H one, like the when they're, um, you know, fighting for the champion champion belt. No, I didn't play much of that. Um, Mickey James only barely started that when I ran the Wii version and all that. So really, you know, the storylines from what I played were okay, actually. You know, I think most of them are an improvement over last year's in 2009, but mm, not probably a major improvement. I think the only good ones I played so far was probably like the Edge and Randy Orton ones that I played so far, most majority of the way through, or all. Uh, in the multiplayer, I only barely played 09 multi, 2010 multiplayer, I mean, sorry about that. Um, 2010 multiplayer, but I didn't play it when I ran the Wii version or the PS2 version. When my cousin brought over, like, you know, 360, actually, I didn't even play that either. I never played 2009, um, 2010, I mean, I'm sorry, I keep messing it up now. 2010 multiplayer, but if it's anything like 2009, you know, I think it's pretty good. And SmackDown games usually do have some pretty good multiplayer. 
Yeah, they they pretty much do have some really good multiplayer, though, you know? I didn't play, ever play 2009. I always played when I, when my cousin brought over the 360 version. And, uh, we, he only has one controller, so we only took turns and everything. Um, but if it's anything like 2009 and all that, you know, it's it's pretty good multiplayer, actually. You know? So basically, I think this game has a decent roster. It is an improvement from the last few games. It does have a pretty good roster. There are the occasional missing superstars like the Heart Dynasty and Zack Ryder and stuff like that. There's always downloadable content for that, but it won't be for the PS2 version or Wii version or anything, but they can do that for the PS3 360 version, so. Um, it has okay stories. They're not the best, but they're not horrible or anything. Um, I think the interesting inclusion of Storyline Desire. Storyline Desire is really good for a first year thing. I mean, improve on it next year, but um, it is pretty good for its first time in the series and all that. And, um,. And um, they're, they're, you can create your own flying move, like diving move for your finisher. There's um, there's improvements in the match types and everything, like the Royal Rumble. And then there's now the, there's the championship scramble match, which that match is actually pretty good. Really hard to win though because you can never get pin or anything when all the people get in there. But and so if you really want to win that match, you probably just start out number one and try to pick off the first person when you start the match, pretty much. And pretty much that's it. And um, one thing about this game, you know, a lot of the rating, you know, it's not really affected by the PG rating or anything. You know, but there are a few things in this game that actually feel like the PG rating really did, you know, have a an effect on it. You know, um, you know, not a major one or anything because it's still the game, it's still rated T and everything. But um, you know, what was I about to say? Um, yeah, but there are a few things, you know, like the, on the right side of the ring by the announcer table is the, um, the, um, the, the barbed wire 2x4 doesn't have barbed wire on it anymore, and basically, you can just kind of feel, I don't know why, it just has a certain feeling to it, but you know it's not all there, but it has like a small, like a little bit of a feeling like that the PG rating did actually have some sort of, you know, effect on it, but not a major one, and also, um, one last thing, I think um, the diva restrictions. This game really got bad. They did improve for the fact that you could put diva like you know in cage matches and TLC matches and table matches and all that. But the fact that men and women can't fight each other when they could in every single game since the original to 2009 is, in my opinion, really sexist and it really kind of makes it stupid and all that. You know, if you want to have a man and a woman fight each other, it's a game you should be able to. It's not like I want to go out and have a man destroy Diva or anything. I have done a lot of matches where, um, not a lot, but you know, some where I have like an equal match between a man and a woman where the woman's trying to prove herself to like the men and everything. And I do have the occasional match where a Diva comes out and doesn't know who the challenger is, and like a random like Snitsky or Umaga, Great Kali, monster type character comes out and destroys in like a minute or two for my storylines and everything. But it's not like I go out there and do 10 minutes of brutality to the diva or anything for crying out loud so why in the world would they do this in the game is beyond me but it kind of makes me think this game is a little bit sexist you know they did prove they did get through the diva um rating with um, the diva like you know restrictions with them not being able to go to other matches like like you know steel cage and everything but now adding this actually in my opinion is even more stupid than that they should have any restrictions. It's a video game for crying out loud. But besides that, you know, I give in the, the score, the gameplay, I give it 8.5 out of 10. The presentation, the graphics of the game, I give it 8 out of 10. The sound of the game, I give it 9 out of 10. The story of the game, I give it 8.5 out of 10. And the multiplayer game, I give it 8.5 out of 10. So in the end, WWE... SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 on the PlayStation 2 gets an 8.5 out of 10. It is a pretty good game in the series. And if you're a fan of the series, you can go rent the game, you can go buy the game, play the game if, you, if you're a really big fan. It's not, in my opinion, it's not the best game in the series, but it actually is a pretty good, decent inclusion to the SmackDown vs. Raw series, alongside the original and alongside 06. That's my review. I'm Sniping is Fun. I'll see you guys later.